Hello and welcome grade 11 accounting students. Now in today's lesson, we are going to be focusing on partnerships. I know we've been doing partnerships for a while now, but in today's lesson, still focusing on partnerships, but the key focus this time around will be analyzing and interpretation of financial statements. In other words, we're going to be looking at calculating ratios and then commenting on the ratios itself. So let's get started. Okay, now before we start with an exercise, absolutely important guys that you remember certain key concepts that you learned in grade 10. Now please remember in grade 10 you were responsible for as the accountant, because in grade 10 you were the accountant, so you were responsible for looking at ratios um, in terms of a sole trader. In a partnership, obviously form of ownership has now changed, we're now looking at a partnership, so when we're looking at the various categories, you will find certain changes that will be made because of a change in form of ownership. So just bear that in mind as I go through each category. Okay, right, ratio analysis can be divided into five main categories. So the categories that we are going to look at will be the category of liquidity, then we've got solvency, profitability and cost efficiency, the fourth one is risk, and then the last one, returns. So those are your five categories and all the ratios that we calculate will fall into one of these categories. So let's look at each category in a bit more detail. Okay, now the first category of liquidity. What do we mean by liquidity? Here guys, we are simply looking at the ability of the company it should be rather the partnership or the business to pay its short-term debt. So I'm just going to quickly change that. We're not looking at the company, but rather we're looking at the ability of the partnership or the business to pay its short-term debts, its non-current liabilities. So can the company, sorry, not company guys, oh, let's say that again, can the partnership pay off its short-term liabilities? Right, now what are the ratios we expect you to know to calculate? The current ratio, which you guys did in grade 10, then we've got your asset test ratio. We're going to be looking at these two calculations later on. The next one being your debt collection period. How long are debtors taking to pay the business? Creditors payment period. Creditors payment. Here we're looking at how long is the business taking to pay its creditors and the impact this has on liquidity. Then we've got your stock turnover rate. How quickly does the business sell its stock? And the last one, the number of days stock on hand. How much of stock on average does the business keep on hand? Okay, so all of these ratios will affect liquidity. And again, liquidity, the ability of the business to pay its short-term debt. Now, remember, guys, when we say short-term debt, we're talking about any debt that can be paid or should be paid within 12 months or less than 12 months is short-term. Okay, right, let's now move on to the next category. The next category, also something familiar, because you did do this in grade 10. Here we're looking at solvency. Now, what does this particular category help us to establish? It helps us to look at the ability of the business to be able to pay off total liabilities after selling total assets or after converting total assets into cash. Right, what does this simply mean? It simply means if I take all my assets, so when we talk total assets, we're talking about your non-current assets plus your current assets. Non-current 
plus current will give us total assets. So if we convert our total assets into cash, will we be able to pay off our total liability or total debt? And again, the word total liability refers to your non-current liability plus your current liability. Non-current, obviously long-term, current liability short-term, total is looking at the sum of the two. Okay, there's only one ratio that you guys need to remember when it comes to solvency, and that is total assets being compared to total liabilities. Right, let's move on to category three. The third category focuses on profitability and cost efficiency. Now, immediately, guys, when we talk about profitability, you think of income versus expenses. So in terms of this particular category, we're going to look at whether or not expenses have been well controlled or well managed for the year. It also looks at whether there's been an increase or decrease in profit. Okay, so the various ratios that fall under profitability and cost efficiency are your gross profit on sales. Then we have gross profit on cost of sales. This particular ratio looks at whether your markup has been achieved. Has that markup been achieved? Has it been consistent throughout the year or not? The third ratio is, let's just put this down a bit, your net profit on sales, the fourth one, operating profit on sales, and then we've got your operating expenses on sales. Now, remember, guys, when it comes to analyzing financial statements or calculating ratios, obviously, this involves you learning of certain formulas or certain formats. Um, when it comes to your cost efficiency or profitability category, it's very, very easy to learn of the format because the actual name of the ratio gives you the formula. So, for example, gross profit on sales simply means I'm taking my gross profit, the word on, divide that by sales, and if I multiply this by 100, I get my percentage gross profit on sales. Just want to include, this should be percentage gross profit on sales. Right, similarly, gross profit on cost of sales, you're going to do the exact same thing. So you're going to take your gross profit, you're going to divide this by cost of sales, and again, multiply it by 100. So this particular category, guys, not difficult to learn off the formulas. Remember, all these formulas are already in your textbook. Sometimes your teacher may summarize the formulas and give it to you on a formula sheet. But remember, it is your responsibility to learn off the formulas. Okay, right, let's move on to the next category. The fourth category focuses on risk. Now, what do we mean by risk? Here we're looking at the actual risk and cost of borrowing capital versus using your own capital. Now, remember, every business wants to obviously, if, or, I mean, if you take partnerships, because in grade 11, we deal with partnerships. In terms of the business itself, obviously it's beneficial for the partners to contribute their own capital into the business. But what happens if you don't have own capital? You don't have sufficient own capital. You then have to borrow capital. Borrowing capital implies applying to the banks and obviously taking out a loan, a long-term loan, in order for you to fund your business or to expand your business. So sometimes taking out a loan is necessary, but it obviously comes with a cost. And that cost is the interest that you have to pay. So this category looks at 
Firstly, can I borrow capital? As well as, is it worth me borrowing capital? Because remember, you've got to pay interest. So there's no point in borrowing capital, using the bank's money, but not generating enough profit to pay off the interest and obviously also satisfy the partners. So we're going to obviously talk about this ratio a bit more, or this category rather, when we do an example. But for now, when we talk about risk, what are the two ratios that you need to know very well? The first one is your debt equity ratio. And please remember, guys, when we talk about debt, we are talking about your non-current liabilities. Not total liabilities, but non-current liabilities. Equity, here we referring to capital contributed by both partners plus their current account balances. Okay, just be very careful because if the current account balance has a credit balance, you're going to then add if, however, it has a debit balance, you will then subtract. Okay, right. The second ratio in this category is your return on total capital employed. And sometimes your exam papers or even your textbook may refer to this as return on average capital employed. Okay, right. The final category before we look at an exercise together, is the category of returns. So in this particular category, okay, what are we now focusing on? Returns refers to, obviously, the partners who have invested in the business. Now, if I take my money, if I take my capital and I open a business, I expect to obtain something from that. In other words, what is the return? What am I getting out of investing my money in this business? So this particular category looks at exactly that. What are the owners or the partners rather getting from investing their capital into the business? What's the return they're receiving? So in, this, in terms of this category, there are three ratios, the first being your return on capital employed, and the next two is the percentage earning of each partner. Okay, um, very quickly, some points to remember when calculating these ratios or the return ratios. Partners want these ratios to be as high as possible. Okay, please remember that your partner wants this to be as high as possible because obviously if I'm investing my capital, the return must be high because it's, it's a high risk um, opening up a business. So the return is expected to be much higher. The higher the ratio, the greater the satisfaction of investing in the business. Right, you will also find that when you are doing this calculation and you ask to comment, you will compare these percentages. I'm talking about, obviously, the ratios. Okay, so you're going to then compare the ratio percentages that you calculated to alternate investments. So, for example, banks, shares on the stock exchange, etc., Right, and then the last point to remember is it is a partnership, so you may be asked to comment on the fairness of the return, especially in terms of the capital contributed by each partner as well as the profits received by each partner. So you could find, for example, partner A contributes twice as much capital as partner B, but for some reason partner B is earning a higher return than partner A, or it could be the other way around. Partner A does a lot of work in the business. Partner B probably works on weekends only or comes in only in the afternoon. Um, however, partner B may be earning a higher percentage return than partner A, or it could be vice versa, the other way around. Okay, so just some points for you to remember when commenting on ratios. 
Right, guys, now before I give you the first exercise to complete, I think it's time for us to uh, take a quick break. So um, let's take a break. Maybe you can look at the formula sheet or your textbook while we're taking a break. And when we get back, we're going to do an exercise um, in terms of ratios. Okay, see you now now. Welcome back, guys. Right, before the ad break, we looked at the five categories um, in terms of ratio analysis. Let's now start with an activity. Okay, so the activity that I'm going to give you to complete for me um, is as follows. The information below was extracted from Pete and Matt traders, and you are given an extract of the balance sheet. So let's look at the extract. You've got inventory, given to you at 25,000, cash and cash equivalent, 30,000, trade and other receivables, 7,000, and then you've got trade and other payables, an amount of 40,000. So I want you guys to now to calculate the following for me. Okay, so using the information, I want you to calculate the current ratio then calculate for me the asset test ratio. And then the last part to the question is briefly comment on whether or not the business should be concerned about their liquidity position. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys three minutes and your time starts now. Okay, guys, time's up. Let's see whether you were able to answer this correctly. I'm sure you were. 
Okay, the first question, calculate the current ratio. So we all know current ratio, we are comparing current assets is to current liability. Right, so if we go back to our information, inventory plus cash and cash equivalent plus trade and other receivable. In other words, if I add 25,000 plus 30,000 plus 7,000, that gives me my current assets. Trade and other payable, there's only one amount. So this amount of 40,000 represents my current liabilities. Okay, let's write that properly. Right, so let's take, get the calculator out and let's calculate our current assets. So we've got 25,000 plus 30,000 plus another 7,000. And my current assets amounts to 62,000. So let's just write that down. Okay, current liabilities. So obviously trade another payable, there's just one amount and my current liabilities is an amount of 40,000. So let's take that information through to our answer sheet. Current assets, 62,000. And my current liabilities, an amount of 40,000. Now remember guys, you've done this in grade 10. So when you're calculating ratios, the right hand side must always equal to 1. So I'm going to divide the right hand side by 40,000. Whatever I do on the right hand side, I do on the left hand side. So if I divide by 40,000, once more on the left hand side. Right, so I'm going to use the space here. So obviously I've got a ratio of 1, 40,000 divided by 40,000. So I've got 1. And then the next part of my calculation. So I've got 62,000, and if I divide that by 40,000, I am getting 1, 55 is to 1. Or if you had to round off to the first decimal, 1, 6 is to 1. Okay, so I've calculated my current ratio. Let's now look at the acid test ratio. The difference between the current ratio and the asset test ratio is the current, um, the asset test ratio still looks at your current assets, but this time without stock, without inventory. So I need to subtract my stock and then I compare this to my current liabilities. So in this case, current liabilities stays at 40,000. Okay. Current assets, an amount of 62,000. And I'm going to now subtract my stock figure. So let's go back to the information. So your inventory, which is your stock, amounts to 25,000. Okay, so I'm going to now subtract 25,000. Okay, so let's just pull out the calculator again. Clear that. So we've got 62. Thousand. That's my total current assets minus twenty five thousand, and that gives me thirty seven thousand. Okay, so let's just write this down here for you guys. Thirty seven thousand is being compared to forty thousand. Right now, if we calculate the ratio once more, I'm going to divide the right hand side by forty thousand and I'm going to get a ratio of 1. Whatever I do on the right-hand side, I do on the left-hand side. So 37,000, let's get the calculator out again. So 37,000 divided by 40,000, and that gives me 0, 0,92 is to 1. Okay, Right, so I've done the calculations for both the current ratio and the asset test ratio. Now let's look at question 3. Question 3 wants me to interpret um, or comment on these calculations above. So question 3, briefly comment on whether or not the business should be concerned about their liquidity position. So going back to my explanation earlier on, liquidity, will we be able to cover our current liabilities um, if we had to convert our current assets into cash? 
does the business have sufficient current assets to cover their current debt or current liabilities? Right, so looking at this situation, the current ratio obviously tells us that for every one rand of current liability, the business has one rand 55 cents of current assets. So looking only at the current ratio, you're probably thinking, okay, this is fine, this is not an issue. If I've got one rand of debt, I've got one rand 55 in terms of my current assets. The asset test ratio, however, guys, let's look at this asset test ratio. If we take away stock, is the business still able to cover their current liability? So that's what this ratio looks at. So for every one rand owed, in terms of current liability, the business only has 92 cents in terms of current assets without the stock. Okay, so this situation here, not a pretty picture in terms of liquidity. Okay, you guys got that. Right, so briefly comment on whether or not the business should be concerned. Yes, they should. Okay, so yes, they should be concerned. And the reason, although Okay, although the current assets or the current ratio, guys, I'm abbreviating, but remember you are not allowed to. So although the current ratio indicates that the business has, okay, I'll fix that quickly. Okay, although the current ratio indicates that the business has um, 1 rand 55 cents for every 1 rand of current debt. Okay, or you guys can obviously quote the ratio above, right? Then you mention the asset test ratio. Okay, so the asset test ratio, I just want to quote. Right, the asset test ratio, so in brackets, I'm just going to state the asset test ratio. Remember it was 0, 0,9 is to 1 indicates that the business will struggle to pay short-term debt. Okay, right, that's what um, these ratios have indicated. Okay, right guys, let's now move on. Right, looking at this activity, use the information of sports traders to answer the following questions below. The business is owned by M. Murray and H. Zhang. Right, your information given. So you've got an extract from the financial statements on the 30th of June, 2015. Now remember guys, 30th of June 2015 will be your current year. Okay, right, we've got 2015 and 2014, 2014 being the previous financial year. So our information that we have in front of us, we've got capital contributed by both partners for both the current year and the previous year. Then we've got the current account balances, again, for both partners, partner Murray and Zhang, for the current year and the previous year. Bear in mind, Zhang has a debit balance in 2014. Then we've got drawings given to us. Also, non-current liability, your current assets at carrying value, a fixed deposit as well. And then further down, current assets and current liabilities. 
Before we look at a question, I think it's time for another break. So let's take a quick break. And when you guys come back, we'll carry on. Okay, see you guys now now. Welcome back, guys. Right, let's now look at the information, or rather the questions. We looked at the information before the ad break. Let's now go straight to the questions. Okay, now your first question wants you to calculate and comment on the solvency ratio for 2015. And this is, um, or the mark allocation for this is six marks. So quite a bit. So, uh, calculate the ratio and comment. So let's do the calculation together. In order for me to calculate solvency, I'm looking at total assets and I'm comparing this to total liabilities. Remember, the question only wants you to do the calculation for 2015. So let's go to our information. Okay, and let's start with total assets. Okay, so the balance sheet, 2015. So my total assets will be my non-current assets. So they have got a non-current asset, tangible asset at carrying value. Then my fixed deposit, 30,000. Current assets, 135,551. And then further down, I've just got current liabilities. So my total assets would be an addition of the three amounts. Right, let's get the calculator out and let's calculate your total assets. Okay. Right, so we've got 300. Okay, plus 30,000 plus 135,551. And that gives us a total of 466,151. So let's take that figure through. Okay, so in our answer sheet, let's just go back a page. Okay, so my total assets is an amount of 466151. Right, now let's look at your total liabilities. So again, total liabilities will be the sum of current liabilities plus non-current liabilities. So back to the information sheet. Again, 2015. So here we're looking at your non-current liability, okay, an amount of 60,000. And then further down, I am looking for current liability, an amount of 69,590. So if I add the two amounts, that then gives me my total liabilities. So let's get the calculator out again. Okay, so I've got an amount of 60 thousand plus sixty nine thousand five hundred and ninety and that gives me a total of one two nine five ninety so let's take that through okay so it was an amount of one two nine just pull up the calculator again five ninety okay Right, now that we've got our total assets and our total liabilities, let's now calculate the ratio. So again, right-hand side, divide that by 129,590. Do the exact same thing on the left-hand side. Divide by 129,590. So that's going to give me a ratio of... Okay, so 4... Double six, one five one, one two nine, five ninety. Okay, there we go. So we've got a ratio of three comma. I'm going to round off. So three comma six is to one. Right. So now that we've calculated. Um, the solvency ratio, how are we going to comment on this ratio? Right, now guys, I'm not going to write detailed comments, but I'm rather going to discuss. So please 
as I'm discussing, you take down the key points. You guys with me? Okay, so in terms of this ratio, for every one ran of total debt, the business has three ran 60 of total assets. So in other words, we have sufficient assets to cover our total debt. You guys with me? All right, not difficult to comment on this ratio. Let's now move on to the next question. Okay, the second question, a very important one, and I want you guys to listen very carefully, and if there's anything that you don't understand, please remember you can always ask your teacher. Will the business be able to obtain an additional loan of 180000 Motivate your answer by calculating and quoting a relevant ratio. Right, now immediately, guys, obtaining an additional loan is obviously looking at borrowing capital. Okay, can the business borrow additional capital? And they want you to motivate your answer by means of a calculation. In other words, calculate a ratio and motivate your answer. So let's look at which ratio is going to assist us in terms of making this call. Should the business or will the business be able to obtain an additional loan? Okay, think about it, giving you guys 30 seconds maybe to discuss this question. Let's make it a minute. I'll give you guys a minute to discuss the question. Think about the ratio that you're going to use to help you answer this question. And um, we'll then discuss it together. Okay, one minute, your time starts now. Okay, guys, your time's up. Right, let's look at the ratio that you probably discussed, and hopefully you were correct, because the ratio you need to calculate is the debt equity ratio. That's what we're looking at. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously calculate this ratio, and then we will go back to the question, will the business be able to obtain an additional loan of 180000 Right, I'm going to calculate the debt equity ratio before taking out an additional loan of 180,000. So let's start firstly with debt. So let's go to our information sheet. Debt, remember, refers to your non-current liability for 2015, which is sitting at 50,000. Sorry, 60,000. 50,000 was for 2014. So 60,000, let's take that amount through. So your debt an amount of 60,000 and then equity for 2015 okay so let's go back to the information sheet your equity would be the capital contributed by each partner okay so I've got partner Murray and then partner Zhang then also your current account balances for each partner that's going to give us our total equity so let's calculate the equity right so we've got an amount of 140,000 plus 120,000 plus 2,490, remember because it's a credit balance, plus another credit balance, double 160. 
Right, so our total equity for the 2015 financial year, an amount of 263,650. So let's take that through to our answer sheet. Okay, so it's an amount of 263,650. Right, let's now calculate our ratio. So once again, divide that by 263,650. Okay, and then divide your debt also by 263,650. Okay, so the ratio. Okay, let's calculate this together, guys. So 60,000 divided by 263,650. And that gives me... Okay, 0, 0,2, and let's just round off to the second decimal, so 0, 0,23 is to 1. Right, now what is this ratio telling me? Okay, very, very important, guys. This ratio is telling me that the business is low-geared. Okay, now what do we mean by low-geared? Low-geared simply means low-risk. Okay, the banks do not see the business as a risk because obviously they don't rely, they don't depend too much on borrowed capital. So if you look at for every one rand of equity of own capital, equity means own capital, they rely on 23 cents of borrowed capital. So obviously this business does not rely on debt. However, they do want to borrow additional capital. So let's now look at what's going to happen to this equation, or rather this ratio, if the business does borrow additional capital. Does the situation remain the same? Okay, so on the side, I'm looking at after taking out the additional loan, what happens to your debt equity ratio? Now remember guys, your equity will stay the same. So 263 650. That will not change. However, your debt from 60,000, your debt will now increase because you're obviously borrowing capital. So if you borrow an additional 180,000, so your debt was 60,000 plus 180,000. So your total debt now becomes an amount of 240,000. 60 plus the 180. Okay, with me. Right, now if we calculate the ratio, so if I divide again, 263, 650, and I obviously do the same, 263, 650. Okay, let's get the calculator out. Okay, so I'm getting 240, and if I divide this by 263, 650, okay, so I'm now getting 0, 0,91 is to 1. Right, now what, again, what does this tell us? If we borrow additional capital, the business is still low-geared. Now remember, guys, Obviously, the closer you get to one is to one, it means that you rely uh, more on borrowed capital or you're starting to rely more on borrowed capital. But in this case here, if we look at after borrowing additional capital or if the business does decide to borrow additional capital from the banks in the form of a loan, you still remain low geared. Okay, just be careful here because the ratio is obviously getting closer to the one is to one. Right, so the advice that you would give the business, okay, going back to the question, will the business be able to obtain an additional loan? The answer will be yes. Okay, and the reason for that is the business is low risk or the business is low geared. And therefore, the banks will grant the business additional loan. In other words, they will qualify for additional loans. Okay, 
right, let's see whether we can do a bit of the next question. We don't have much time left. Okay, the third question, guys, I'm going to quickly discuss the question. There's no time for me to do the actual question, but maybe after the show, you guys can attempt this in class. The question wants you to calculate each partner's total earnings for the year ended, 30th of June 2015, and then they also tell you that you may draft a ledger account as part of your calculation. Okay, now remember, we've got two partners. Okay, so we've got partner Zhang. Right, and we've got another partner called partner Murray. Right, now which ledger accounts are you going to reconstruct or you're going to draft? You're going to draft the current accounts. Okay, so the current account for each partner. What does the current account show us? Now, remember, we did ledger accounts um, a few weeks ago. So on the debit side, we're obviously looking at whatever the owner's taken from the business. In other words, their drawings. And on the credit side, we look at their total earnings. So if you reconstruct the ledger accounts and you fill in the figures given to you in that um, extract from the balance sheet, you will be able to then calculate total earnings by letting this amount be an unknown figure. So in other words, fill in the opening balances, the closing balances, the total drawings for the year, as accounting students, we know that if we have a balance brought down as well as a balance carried down, the debit side is equal to the credit side. So if total earnings is an unknown figure, then you obviously can solve for that unknown figure. Okay, right. It's rather unfortunate, but that's all the time we have for um, as far as the lesson is concerned. But remember, guys, you in class, ask your friends if you're struggling with anything. Ask your teacher if you're battling with a specific question. And again, guys, practice, practice, practice. Until we meet again, from me, Mahesh Lal, it's goodbye and God bless.